Hey, it's Norman with iSave Tractors. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert an old Kohler K-Series breakerless ignition system back into a breaker points ignition system. Here we go. Let's do it. These breakerless ignition systems that Kohler used were only used in a handful of applications for a pretty short time. I've found these on Power King tractors, Arian tractors, uh, some of the old wheel horse tractors like the one in this video. And there may be a few more, but they're not all that common. Uh, you know, most of the people who call us that have these systems will have an old Power King economy or Jim Dandy tractor. Uh, a lot of times these breakerless coils will fail at this point in time and nobody makes a replacement. So when that happens, we recommend to switch back to the traditional breaker point ignition systems, which I'm going to show you how to do right now. Okay, let me first show you how to test one of these breakerless ignition coils to make sure you need to go through this conversion process. Uh, first, you unplug the two wires coming out of the coil. You're going to take an ohms reading between the spark plug terminal and ground, and then again through the little key switch terminal on the bottom of the coil and ground. What you should be getting for a reading between the spark plug terminal and ground should be around 11.5 kilo ohms, which is 11,500 ohms. And the reading you should get between the trigger switch and ground should be zero open line or something similar. It should not show that there's a, a connection there. So this particular breakerless ignition coil tests out okay. I had about 11,000 ohms of resistance between the spark plug terminal and ground, and then I had an open line connection between the little trigger tab on the bottom and ground. So this coil is good, but you know, of course, this video is about converting it, so I'm gonna show you the conversion process anyways. We begin by first removing the trigger module that is located underneath this flywheel housing. Uh, the trigger module runs off of a magnet off the flywheel, and that's what tells the breakerless coil when to fire the spark plug. Now, if you have like a Power King, Jim Dandy, Economy Tractor, where the engine is kind of turned 90 degrees, where it may not be very easy to remove the flywheel housing, you don't have to remove this trigger module. It is not in the way. You could simply cut the wires if that were the case, tape them off, and leave it there. But for this particular video, I'm going to go ahead and remove this trigger module. That little square device at about 10 o'clock on the flywheel, that is your trigger for the breakerless ignition system. It's held on there with just uh, one or two bolts. Just remove those and it'll come right out. Now to remove the breakerless ignition coil, it's just held on to uh, the flywheel housing with two bolts. Just remove those and it'll come right out. You can remove this uh, when you have the flywheel housing off of the engine after you remove the trigger. I decided for the sake of this video to put it back on and it just it makes for a better camera shot. But uh, essentially just remove the breakerless coil and the trigger and then we'll get ready to put our new parts back on. Yeah. 
Now this is where we're going to install the engine breaker points. This is the same side as the engine block that has the carburetor on it and it's in the lower left hand corner. You'll see all these series of holes. Uh, they're all gonna be threaded except for one. The hole in the middle has a metal or plastic plug in it that we're gonna punch into the engine and it's gonna come out when we change the oil. Now before we do this, we just wanna clean this area up before we punch in that plug. Uh, just so no debris gets into the engine. You can use some uh, engine cleaner, degreaser, plus some compressed air. Clean this area out as best as you can. Now, every engine block that has breakerless ignition systems has these holes. So if your holes are hard to see, they could be you know, filled with 50 years of dirt and debris. Just hit it with some uh, compressed air, some cleaner. Clean it out so you can see all these holes. This is the hole that we punch in. You can just use a small little punch. This is where your breaker points push rod is going to come out. That plug just falls right into the crankcase, and when you change your oil, it will come out with it. Here are all of the parts you're going to need to do this conversion. All of these parts, by the way, are available at iSave Tractors. Please check us out at iSaveTractors.com. Now, starting at the top of the screen, uh, to the left, that is your spark plug cable. We sell zero ohm spark plug cables. And then to the right of that is a battery ignition coil that has the properly internal resistor, followed by a Champion H10C spark plug. Moving down to the second row on the left-hand side is your battery ignition key switch. That's important. Don't forget that. With a breakerless system, you're using a magneto key switch. And for this conversion, you need to switch over to a battery ignition key switch like what is shown. Uh, next up is the condenser. To the right of the condenser is the breaker points push rod. This is what goes into that hole where we punched out that plug. Next up is the breaker points themselves. And then the, the, the points cover gasket. Now moving to the last row on the left-hand side, you'll see a little black thing. That's your points cover grommet. That goes around the wire that leads to the points, and then it goes into this little notch in the points cover. Those are four 1024 screws and then the points cover itself. The points covers, uh, we might not have in stock at all times, but if we don't have it, I can direct you on where to find it. You can find them used on eBay as well as through uh, other used parts suppliers. In the not too distant future, hopefully by the end of the year 2021, iSafe Tractors will be making brand new points covers uh, for customers to use. I will include uh, in the description box below, I will include part numbers as well as product links to all the parts that we use in this video. Now before we go ahead and install the breaker points onto our engine, we want to clean off the contacts with a little bit of carb cleaner or other solvent and then just take a normal piece of paper or an envelope and just rub them between the points contacts. What we're doing is we're just removing any leftover residue from uh, when we make these breaker points, we will spray a little protective coating over the contacts to prevent corrosion. Uh, this is very common with all breaker points for pretty much every engine out there. It's a good idea just to take uh, a little time before you install it just to make sure those contacts are clean from uh, any coating. I like to also double check quickly with a multimeter that the contacts are indeed uh, showing continuity and able to pass current through them. Now back at our engine block, we're going to first put our points push rod through the hole that previously had the plug in it. We'll just slide it in and it'll make contact with a camshaft on the inside of the engine. Next up, we're going to take our breaker points and we're just going to screw them onto the engine block. Now we want to set the breaker point gap to be 20 thousandths of an inch. Now, before we do anything, it's a good idea to loosen up that point adjustment bracket that I just loosened up and push it all the way against the engine block and then re-tighten it. Now you want to turn your engine by hand until the breaker points open until their widest position. So what you can do is you can turn your flywheel, or on what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to turn the PTO side. You turn it until the points open up all the way, and then you'll see them start to close again. Then turn it back until they're open all the way, and then that's where you're going to make your adjustment and get your 20 thou point gap. 
Now watch carefully how I adjust these points. I first use a 20 thou feeler gauge to see where I'm at. And then I will use this little notch right here and a flathead screwdriver. And I will move that breaker contact that way until I get a perfect slight drag on that feeler gauge. And then when I'm ready to tighten it, I'll use a flathead in that notch to keep it there. And then I'll use a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten everything back down. And then I will reconfirm the gap with my 20 thousandths feeler gauge. Now let's go over and install the new battery ignition coil. I'm just going to mount it to the flywheel blower housing exactly where the breakerless coil was. Uh, this is typically a good spot to put your ignition coil. Some tractors, you have to put the ignition coil on top of the cylinder head for clearance for other things. But most machines I encounter have the ignition coil here or on the other side of the flywheel housing. Now, the wire that goes from the key switch to the ignition coil is going to be coming from the I terminal of your key switch. From the I terminal of the key switch, that wire is going to plug into the positive side of the ignition coil. So when your key switch is in both the run and start position, it's going to feed 12 volts to your battery ignition coil. Now, the negative terminal on the ignition coil, you're going to hook in a wire like this and this is going to go to your breaker points. On one end, I'm going to have a female spade. On the other, you can use a hook or ring terminal that's going to go on the back of the breaker points. You want to put this wire on that little Phillips head screw that's on the back of the breaker points that attaches to that little piece of a spring metal there. After that, you want to thread your points cover gasket as well as your points cover grommet through and around that wire that goes to the points and then after that you're going to want to install your points cover this will keep uh, dirt and dust out of your breaker points Now, to install the condenser into this system, the condenser gets plugged into the negative side of the ignition coil, and then it gets mounted to anywhere where there's a good ground connection. On this particular tractor, I'm going to put it on this screw that is uh, behind the carburetor and the governor. First, got to get this uh, governor linkage out of the way. That's just a simple matter of uh, unplugging a little plastic bushing, moving it, snapping it back in place. And this screw right here, is where I'm going to put it. The wire will reach the coil. It's out of the way. It doesn't interfere with the governor. This will be a good spot. Here I am just threading the ring terminal from the condenser onto the negative terminal of the ignition coil. Now I'm snapping back that governor linkage between the governor and the throttle, just putting it back where it was, and we're almost finished. Now let's prepare the spark plug cable. This is our zero ohms spark plug cable by iSave Tractors. This is just a straight conductor through it, so this is uh, the best kind of cable to use for these older battery ignition setups. Now we ship it uh, as a foot and a half long. We ship it with one terminal already installed, which is the ignition coil side. You kind of just want to slide the boot down into a better position. I also like to take a little flathead screwdriver and just widen the terminal here just so it has a nice tight fit into the coil. The reason we don't install the spark plug end is uh, so you can cut it to length. For this video, I'm just going to leave it. Uh, you can use a pocket knife to cut back the insulation and peel it off. I like to use this spark plug tool, crimp tool here. This will cut it perfectly as well as crimp the terminal. But if you don't have one of these, you can easily use a pocket knife and just a simple set of pliers to install this terminal.
after you cut back some of the insulation, you take that conductor, you just fold it back on itself. Now you install the terminal around that. This will ensure that there's a great connection between the spark plug cable and the spark plug terminal. There's a little spike in the terminal that you stab through the insulation. Now here you could just use pliers like this and crimp the terminal on and then you'd be done. Or, in my case, since I'm using the spark plug tool, I'm going to next uh, crimp it with my tool and that will give it the tightest, uh, most professional looking fit there. However, there's nothing wrong with just using regular slip pliers uh, like what I have in the video. After the terminal's on, you can take your boot and just slide it over that terminal. If it's a little tight, you can spray some WD-40 on it, but however, as you see, uh, installing a dry piece of cake. And that's it. This, co this cable is ready to be installed onto the coil. Now, the spark plug gap on a battery ignition system should be 35 thousandths of an inch. So here I'm using my spark plug gap tool, and I'm going to gap the spark plug to 35 thousandths. Now simply put in your new spark plug, screw it in, tighten it up, and then hook up your spark plug cable between the spark plug and the big center terminal of the ignition coil. And you're almost ready to rock and roll. I'm Right here, I'm just sliding that rubber boot a little further down just to make it so it's a nice, accurate fit. Just kind of fine-tuning this to make it perfect. There you have it. Now that we've installed everything we need to, this engine should start right up. I've installed a little inline spark tester as well, just so we can see it sparking. Let's give it a little start. Hey, and there you have it. That brings us to the end of this video. This is how you convert a Kohler K-Series breakerless ignition system back into a traditional breaker points ignition system. Please check out our website, isavetractors.com. We sell conversion kits, parts, as well as we have tons of free information, including wiring diagrams and other technical articles to help you in your pursuit to save the old garden tractors. Once again, my name is Norman. Thanks for watching.